Hello, and have we got some crypto news for you today. Coinbase is going to list Bonk. It is the first SPL meme coin that they're going to list. What is SPL? It's basically the Solana standard for tokens. It's like ERC, BEP, BRC, you know, whatever else. Um, it's like, you know, an ecosystem Solana coin. That's what uh, SPL is. And they're going to list Bonk. Why would they list Bonk? Because Coinbase, if you didn't know, they integrated the SPL system a while back, and now they can add Solana coins just as easily as they added Cardano coins. They don't, I mean, Solana coins as much as Ethereum coins. They don't, they haven't integrated any other ecosystem quite yet. Hopefully they integrate more in the future. But Bonk has also gotten a lot of popularity. It's actually surpassed Pepe in terms of size. It's in the top 100. It had probably caught Coinbase's attention. Remember, these companies are trying their best to make as much profit as possible. They know how much volume and how much trading these meme coins can get when they get popular, and they want those trading fees, which is why they decided to list Bonk. Will they list Snack um, in a while? Maybe, but remember, they haven't integrated Cardano like they've integrated Cardano, uh, Solana into the ecosystem, so it takes significantly more for them to, uh, to list Snack. Plus, Snack isn't quite as big. It's not even in the top 200 yet. It's not hasn't doesn't have a hundred million market cap yet. Bonk is going to be a significantly higher market cap coin, even though it has actually dumped today uh, after the Coinbase dump. I do believe that Coinbase will eventually list other ecosystems meme coins, but they have to get bigger. And also like Coinbase has to be convinced to actually integrate the other ecosystems. And those ecosystems have to get sufficiently big, which I do not believe that Cardano is quite yet. Hopefully we get it during this bull run. And if Coinbase actually wins that lawsuit of that uh, secondary markets are not securities, I think they'll be listing other ecosystems very, very quickly. So very cool, they're listed bonk. That gives more hope for like Snack and other stuff, but they have to, you have, we have to get Coinbase to actually integrate those networks within Coinbase itself. The SEC has served Richard Hart, but not in person because he's very, very evasive. But they've served him, and uh, that's actually quite interesting. So the suit was served via an alternate method, which they got the court to approve of, as process servers were unsuccessful in contacting Richard Hart in person for months. Remember, Richard Hart has been running from the feds. It's probably why... Um, uh, like Pulse and Hex have not been doing well because he's not been there to actually pump them and he's on the run. So the US SEC said it served its lawsuit to Hex founder Richard Schuler, aka Richard Hart. So yes, his name is actually Richard J. Schuler, for those of you that don't know, at his heart at his house in Finland's capital of Helsinki, but he was obviously not in Helsinki. They couldn't run him down and serve him the papers personally. So they served him in December 11th, the New York District Court filing. The SEC said it served Hart through substitute service on October 31st, an alternative for when a suit can't be personally delivered to a defendant typically due to difficulties in locating them. Obviously, they're on the run. They don't want to be located, so they can't be served. But now they have alternate ways, even if you're actually on the run. They've had several failed attempts, and they've been trying to locate him for seven weeks, all the way back to September. So this is the notice of service straight from the SEC. So this is from Cointelegraph, but this particular part straight from the SEC. Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission files this notice of servant pursuing to Rule 4F of Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Richard Schuler and his alter ego uh, and entities, Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, were served on October 31st, 2023, in accordance to Finnish law and the Hague Convention on the Service Abroad of Judicial and Extrajudicial Documents. So, like, they finally finalized this a couple of days ago. The SEC sued Hart in July, allegedly alleging he made over a million dollars selling Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X, which the agency claimed were unregistered securities. It also claimed Hart defrauded investors in the U.S. and overseas by misappropriating at least $12 million of their funds to buy a 555-carat diamond, expensive watches, and high-end automobiles, which he obviously did. Remember the whole uh, Pulse Burn thing? You basically had to donate your ERC coins to uh, Richard Hart to get worthless coins in exchange. And guess what he did with all those coins? He bought diamonds, he bought uh, you know cars and stuff like that. And obviously Hart has kept his whereabouts closely guarded. After seeing the whole thing with CZ, he is probably never coming out. So if you're interested in uh, Pulse or um, Hex, you're probably kind of screwed because Hex is down 81.5% over the past year and 99% since, since September 19th, 2021. Um, 
And of course, Pulse Chain is not doing so, at least last time I checked. So those are probably screwed as long as Richard Hart actually stays in hiding. And after seeing Binance having to pay five, like $4.3 billion to the DOJ and another $4 billion or so to like the FO, FSC and others, I don't think he's ever coming out. So if you're invested in those, not good for you. So let me actually talk about Elizabeth Warren and her bill and what she really wants. I don't think her ultimate goal is to pass the bill, at least not on this proposal. The bill isn't going to pass. Um, like three, like I think 3% of our sponsored bills actually pass, and this is not one of them because this has been rejected twice already in the past. I think she just keeps on bringing up these bills knowing that they will fail, but every time she does, she gets to talk about crypto in a negative light. She brings up crypto, so she's playing the long game. Like she's bring, She brings up crypto in connections with terrorist financing and fraudulent activity. And if you do that time after time after time, you get people thinking that crypto is mainly used for fraudulent activity, which is not true. Most of crypto is not illicit activity. It is perfectly fine activity. Only a small part of it is illicit activity. Like any kind of currency transactions, you're never going to be able to weed them all out. Like, you know, if you look at USD, a small part of it's using for illicit activity, much more than crypto, but that's because USD's flow overall is way, way bigger. So I don't think it's Warren's intention to really pass this bill. It's trying to get some of these ideas in people's heads so she can pass certain parts of it attached to other bills in the future. It's like a strategic long game for Elizabeth Warren because she knows that like she can't just kill crypto in one step and she sees like the crypto army the pro crypto army is rising up faster and faster so she's probably getting nervous about this because her kind of like selling point of like making uh, making crypto harder and harder to actually access in the United States is failing what we actually need to do is get the pro crypto senators to fire back at her and basically criticize um, you know, her points and basically like compare it with other means of transactions and how much, you know, illicit um, activity crypto has versus how much illicit activity like USD or any other kind of currency uh, has. So Warren is actually not playing the short game of like trying to get crypto banned immediately. She knows it's not going to work. She just wants to talk about it over and over again to get that negative connotation and that negative feeling in the hearts of other senators. And that's why nine others have joined her. It's never really going to get past the House right now, but with like Patrick McHenry stepping down, she's just trying to get the public to actually turn against crypto too by getting this out there. And we in the crypto community need to do the exact opposite by educating people that most crypto transactions are indeed not for illicit activity, perfectly legal activity. And that Warren's points are mainly BS. It's about like her education or misinformation against our education for crypto. So that's really what she wants her bill out of her bill. She's not really aiming to stomp out crypto in one fell swoop. Trump has launched his uh, NFT, NFT collection. Yes, it's another grift. It's a mugshot collection this time. So it's basically like pictures of Trump, like basically in his mugshot, like being arrested by the feds. Will it be popular? I don't know if it'll be popular or not. It's just another grift. I'm not really going to buy them, but I'm sure he has plenty of fans that'll eat it right up because they'll buy whatever he comes out with. Don't really know how much they're going to be, and he did actually make a commercial for them. I think for the first three times, he found it was a great grift, and I think like uh, he's not the one actually making these. He's like basically um, sourcing this out, and he's basically just letting him use his name uh, in order to make some money, basically. So that's what you have for the Donald Trump NFT fiasco or whatever the Donald Trump's uh, NFT stuff is. Don't really think it's going to catch on, but there'll be a niche market because there's a lot of Trump followers out there. Will he release more NFTs? Yes, because I do believe his campaign and the GOP campaigns running into funding problems. I don't think they've raised as much this time as they have like the, the past years, maybe because the economy is bad or something and the Democrats are, are out raising them like three or four to one or something like that. So they'll probably try to send a sell more NFTs to A, pay off Donald Trump's legal troubles and B, uh, also to raise funds and campaign funds for both him and uh, the other Republican Party members. There is usually a disclaimer at these fundraisers, like most of the money actually 
basically goes to his personal account and not to like the campaign funds. There's a small disclaimer in there that's saying that he can use it for anything he wants and only a small part of it actually goes to the candidates. So if you want to donate to one of the GOP candidates, remember to directly donate to that candidate and not go for one of his donations. Also, I'm pretty sure like all the licenses of these NFT sales go directly into his pocket and not really the campaign's pocket, but mo some of it is probably going to be used for that particular presidential campaign. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.